So we know the control of the House could prove crucial for the next two years, particularly if Trump wins the November 5th elections. Uh, we know the Republicans have a better than even chance of winning the Senate. So a Republican House could provide them with an iron grip on Washington. But I have a feeling that Representative Hakeem Jeffries isn't going to let that happen. Uh, Hakeem Jeffries, Democratic leader of the House, is joining me and my colleague, Reva Martin, for a quick chat. Welcome. Good morning, Dr. Nee. Good morning, Ariva. Great to be with you both. Great. Thank you so much. I'm going to just kick this off. First of all, thank you for coming into California. It's such an uh, important state, not often thought of as a battleground state, but clearly as it relates to these house races, California has become significantly more important. So you were in the uh, Antelope Valley over the weekend stomping for Democratic candidates for the House. And at the same time, the minority, uh, the majority, I should say, leader Mike Johnson was in California and Donald Trump was in the Coachella Valley. And Trump was doing what Trump usually does, uh, Speaker Jeffries, and that is paint California as this horrible place. High taxes, high crime, uh, high numbers of homelessness, uh, high housing prices. How are the candidates that you're supporting, these Democratic candidates, going to overcome this rhetoric that Trump is uh, becoming increasingly, uh, you know, focused on around housing, the economy, and particularly immigration. How do they overcome that to make sure Democratic voters turn out in big numbers and elect Democrats so that we can control the House? Well, California has become the most critical battleground state in the context of control of the U.S. House of Representatives. There are eight competitive races in California alone that could go either way. That is the largest number of competitive districts in the House out of any state in the country. And so it was an honor to be uh, in the Antelope Valley with George Whitesides, who is running a great campaign focused on the issues, lowering costs, creating better paying jobs, making sure communities are kept safe, and of course, leaning into the promotion of access to affordable home ownership for our community and for every community. I also had the opportunity to spend some time in Little Saigon with Derek Tran, a Vietnamese American, a former uh, army veteran, uh, someone who is a small business owner uh, and is the son of refugees of Vietnamese uh, immigrants who fled communism uh, in the 1970s for a better life in America. And so much like Vice President Kamala Harris, uh, we're going to continue to focus on a forward-looking message designed to meet the needs of the American people, focused on lowering costs, focused on creating an economy for everyday Americans, and of course, focused on dealing with the affordable housing crisis, uh, but also drawing a contrast with you know, the very dangerous vision that is being articulated by far right extreme MAGA Republicans. We wanna bring the country together. They're trying to tear us apart. Uh, we, wanna, we wanna move America forward. They are desperate to turn back the clock. Uh, we're gonna continue to put people over politics. They're all about Trump's project 2025, which is extreme MAGA Republican control over the lives of the American people. Leader Jeffries, considering the fact that California is home, to five of the six most diverse competitive districts in the country. Can you tell us what's the D trip doing differently to reach California voters who could be the margin of victory uh, for Dems quest to win back the house and for you to become potentially our next speaker? Well, it's a very important question and you're absolutely right uh, in the context of these close districts that are also incredibly diverse districts. And that includes African Americans in the Antelope Valley. That includes Asian Americans, including the Vietnamese American uh, community in Orange County. Uh, that includes significant Latino communities in the Central Valley in their two competitive races in the Central Valley. So we've recognized very early on that it's important to communicate authentically with diverse communities of color do it on the ground, do it early, don't simply show up around election time, but make it clear that we have a long-standing commitment that will extend beyond the election in order to solve problems, uh, to deliver real results, and to make sure that people who we know are struggling to live paycheck to paycheck 
uh, can find a better path forward so that they're not simply getting by, but they're getting ahead. That's the vision uh, that Vice President Harris and Coach Walls have also articulated. And we've, we've tried to make it clear on the ground, door to door, in the communities, in the churches, uh, showing up at senior centers uh, and making sure that we are having real, authentic, direct conversations, not simply slick television advertisements, which people feel inundated by uh, and will sometimes tune out, particularly down the stretch. So we've been doing that uh, not simply over the last few weeks, but from the very beginning uh, of this election cycle, this congressional term, uh, which began in January of 2023. And we'll continue to have those conversations through and past the election because our real commitment is to make life better for the communities we hope to represent. So Leader Jeffries, today uh, our Vice President, our uh, nominee for President Kamala Harris rolled out a plan specifically addressing Black men, a plan that would provide more economic opportunities, a business loan, a forgiveness for business loans, a plan focused on the health and health care status of Black men, because we've heard throughout this campaign that the presidential uh, campaign of Kamala Harris has an issue with Black men. While you're in California, I happen to be in Phoenix, uh, going door to door, doing some canvassing, talking to voters. And I am hearing uh, from some Black men apathy around this election, not just at the top of the ticket, but obviously those down ballot races too. What are you saying to Black men, particularly those in California, uh, that can be the margin you know, their votes could be the margin of difference in terms of taking control of the House and getting Kamala Harris elected. My message has been, we hear you, we see you, and we're committed to delivering for you on the issues that matter, which are in many cases, largely, but not exclusively economic. You know, the Black Economic Alliance has for a significant period of time, an organization of African-American entrepreneurs and people in the business community talked about the importance of work, wages, and wealth. The plan that has been rolled out uh, by the Kamala Harris campaign is consistent with how she's conducted herself as vice president, leaning into access to capital, leaning into entrepreneurship, leaning into small business creation, uh, and of course, leaning into home ownership which has always been an important part of wealth creation, generation, uh, and transformation from one generation to the next within the African-American community and for every other community in the United States of America. And so, you know, what's been interesting about the challenges that we've often confronted is that when you are living in an environment where there are far-right extremists who are attacking social justice, attacking racial justice, attacking economic justice, attacking civil rights and voting rights, uh, you are to some degree in a defensive posture. And we've got to work on those issues, make sure that folks are unable to turn back the clock, which is one of the reasons why as House Democrats were committed uh, to passing the John Robert Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act so we can end the era of voter suppression in the United States of America once and for all, and that everyone can have their voice heard in a democracy, one person, one vote. At the same period of time, as we are fighting these defensive battles to try to make sure there is liberty and justice for all and equal protection under the law, consistent with the values of the United States of America and our constitution, we need to lean into economic opportunity and empowerment. And that's a message that I've consistently heard uh, in talking to African-American men, particularly younger ones, uh, who wanna be part of the fabric of the great American dream and just want equal access to that opportunity, which is why uh, we're gonna continue to lean in to entrepreneurship, access to capital, uh, wealth creation, home ownership, uh, and economic empowerment. We hear you, we see you, we're committed to working hard for you. Leader Jeffries, uh, in an effort to deliver a more perfect union that uh, more brothers in our community, quite frankly, can feel, 
Um, you know, I'm the younger brother in my family that happens to be a professor. I know that you have a younger brother uh, that is an associate professor at Ohio State University. Your wife is a social worker. What do you make of VP Harris's opportunity agenda for black men? Are there any particular aspects, specific aspects that you want to underscore uh, as a part of the community and as a father of two black men? I think what's incredibly important uh, is the focus by Vice President Harris on entrepreneurship in particular. And we know that there are a lot of brothers in the community who have incredible ideas, who are very creative, uh, and who are interested in starting something on their own, consistent with what the free enterprise system in the United States of America has been all about. Uh, but there have been barriers to entry that have been erected. Vice President Harris is committed to tearing down those barriers of entry and making sure everybody has an equal opportunity to get onto the playing field. I have the honor of representing the 8th Congressional District back home in Brooklyn, which has given the world many things, Shirley Chisholm, Biggie Smalls, Jay-Z, Jackie Robinson, we can go through the list. Uh, but Jackie Robinson in particular, uh, and that moment when he broke the color barrier uh, in Major League Baseball demonstrated that if you just allow everyone onto the field and allow to play in the game, same equipment, same bat, same helmet, same glove, just let everyone onto the field that we can perform at the highest levels. Uh, and so I think what many in our community are looking for in the context of, you know, wealth generation, economic empowerment, entrepreneurship, is just to be allowed to have access to the playing field under the same set of rules as everyone else, and are prepared to take it from there. And so I think what uh, Vice President Harris has laid out is you know, access to the capital necessary through grants and or forgivable loans or low interest loans so that when you have people within the community who have ideas, uh, who want to uh, replicate what we know was done in the deep south in the aftermath of uh, the freeing of our um, enslaved ancestors and during the Reconstruction era prior to Jim Crow, uh, where you had an incredible amount of entrepreneurship explode on the scene out of necessity, but then in many instances was crushed, as for instance, we saw in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Uh, we, we, we just want to be able to revive that spirit. Uh, and more than anything else, that's what I've heard. That, that there are people in the community who understand the need to fight for criminal justice reform, understand the need to fight for racial justice, understand the need to make sure that everyone has the right to vote, uh, but want us to go beyond it. Uh, as you both know, uh, as you both know, have, having been students of history and followed the civil rights movement uh, and our struggles, I, I, I often remind people that the 1963 March on Washington when you when you look back and you lay out its full name, which is often not repeated, is the March on Washington for jobs and freedom. That was the March on Washington. So Dr. King and John Lewis and Rosa Parks and Fannie Lou Hamer and others understood that this was about racial justice, equal protection under the law, and at the same time, of course, in fact, jobs was first. Uh, in the full name of the March on Washington, this is about economic opportunity. Uh, and so in many ways, we're just trying to complete uh, the dream, the vision that was articulated by those who understood that you will not achieve complete freedom in the absence of full economic empowerment. Well, thank you so much, uh, Leader Jeffries. I got to give a big shout out to a younger brother, Hassan Jeffries, who happens to be a regular on Ariva Martin in real time. Uh, he holds it down, gives us such great insights. And now I, I can tell brilliance runs in the family. So uh, thank you, Leader Jeffries, for joining both uh, my colleague, Dr. Nee and I. This uh, interview is, is critically important. Thank you for being in California. Thank you for the great work that you're doing. Uh, we got about 21, 22 days to go. So all hands on deck, all boots on the ground uh, to get this done so we can save this democracy. 
Well, thank you so much, uh, Ariva. Thank you so much, Dr. Nee. Shout out to my baby brother, Hassan Jeffries. Uh, though he's a Mets fan and I'm a Yankees fan, uh, nothing but love there. That's all right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.